Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. Hello, hello, hello. I am so sorry for being so MIA. I have not spoken to you guys in so, so long. It feels like forever, trust me. Um, I have been so busy in December. December is such a busy month, you will know. So I am getting back into filming. I'm gonna be filming a couple videos for you guys that will be coming out very, very soon, so stay tuned. But today, I wanna to talk about my top 10 books for 2023. My top 10 books. Now, reflecting on this year, I read a hundred books, a hundred books. And I don't know how that happens. Let's put that into perspective. Last year, I read 12. Last year, I read 12 books and this year, a hundred which is so crazy to me. My goal on Goodreads this year was 20 because I wanted it to be more than last year. But now I'm like, I don't know what to do. I, I don't want it to be more than 100. So I do not know. I will talk to you guys about that in another video about my goals for next year. But today we're talking about my top 10. There are so many books behind me and you know how hard it was for me to choose my top 10 so hard. I have collated 10 books next to me and let's go through them. I am not going to go through them in any order or anything like that. It's just going to be at random, my random top 10. I am not going to pick and choose between one and 10 because I feel like I'll be here all day and then I'll regret all of the decisions I make. <laughs> we all know what my number one is, but the other nine are just up for grabs. Also, do not mind my voice. I am very, very sick at the moment. So you are just going to have to deal with my, my manly voice until I get better. So let's get into it. I am very, very excited to show you guys these. These are my children. These are my babies. These are some of my favorite books I've read ever. And I'm so excited to share them with you. If any of you haven't read any of these, I highly, highly recommend it. They are pure gold, pure magic books, and I cannot wait to share them. They are mostly all romance because I am such a romance girly. There's one fantasy book in here, but other than that, they're pretty much all romance. So take that as you must. Alrighty, let's get into it. <music> Alrighty, so the first book in my top 10 is Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. I know that this is going to be on a lot of people's top 10s and it's not just me, but I don't even really need to explain it. If you don't know what this book is, what, where the heck have you been? Like, where the heck have you been? It is a fantasy book. I don't read fantasy. I This is the only fantasy book I've ever read and I devoured it. I ate it up. I still think about it to this day. The ending, the cliffy at the end was just chef's kiss, really. And Rebecca Yaros really smashed it out of the park with this one. Um, Iron Flame, the second one in this series, came out this year and I still haven't finished it. I don't know if that shows you how much I love Fourth Wing compared to Iron Flame, but don't let the size intimidate you. Do not let the size intimidate you. I really love this book. It's Enemies to Lovers as well. There's like a little subplot of romance. So it's a romanticy and I really, really loved it. Usually I don't like books that are like subplot romance, but I really, really love this. And next year I really want to try and read some more fantasy books because I think that they'll be up my alley. So Fourth Wing is in top 10. I'm not ranking it. I'll be here forever. The next book in my top 10 was Eyes on Me by Sarah Kate. You guys know that I love this series. I love the first two books. This is the second book in the Salacious Players Club series and I cannot explain to you how well Sarah Kate writes. She writes a sex scene so, so well. It is so spicy. These books are chef's kiss. The first two, so, so good. I didn't particularly love the the third and the fourth, but they were still really good. So this one follows Garrett and Mia. Garrett is a co-owner of the Salacious Players Club and he pretty much falls for his stepsister. 
who falls for her stepsister. It's a little bit taboo. This book's a little bit taboo, but not blood related, so it's okay. Um, and essentially, they can't stand each other. She is a video, I don't know how to say this. She is a video sex worker. That's how I'll, I'll tell it. That's how I'll explain it. And he stumbles across her page and doesn't know that it's her until he figures it out. And then they start talking online. He knows that it's her. She doesn't know that it's him. And then things unravel. Things unravel. So much happens in this small little book, but it is so, so good. I highly recommend this series if you haven't read it. It is spicy. So you should know that going in. You should know that going in. Um... And there's a lot of different little kinks talked about as well in here. So I highly, highly recommend it. The next book in my top 10 is Juniper Hill by Devney Perry. This is the second book in the Eden series. The Eden series is a small town romance series in the small town of Quincy. And I loved this book so much. The first book in the series is called Indigo Ridge and when I read that I thought it was going to be my top in the series but Knox just literally knocked it out of the park. It follows Knox, Eden and Memphis. Memphis is a single mum and Knox owns and runs the restaurant in a hotel that she has come to work at. Um, This book is so 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 good. Highly highly recommend it. The chemistry between these two is palpable. It is palpable. And how he just fits into her little family is so good. And this series just gets better and better and better. I love the Eden series. If you're looking for small town romance series, please pick these ones up. They are so, so, so good. The next book of my top 10 is Redeemed by Lauren Asher. This is the fourth book in the Dirty Air series. And I freaking loved this book so much. I love this series so much. And I know that some people really don't like it and I don't understand. I really just don't understand. It is Formula One romance and it follows Santiago and Chloe. And it is fake dating situation where pretty much she has come to this little town to find her father, her long lost father. And when she is trying to spy on her dad, she ends up falling into the next door neighbor's backyard. The next door neighbor is Santiago, who is going through a lot of trauma, a lot of mental health issues, which are depicted amazing in this book. And he is really just struggling at the moment. And to stop his sister from worrying about him, he tells his sister that Chloe is his girlfriend. And then it just works out. Chloe can stalk her dad from afar, find out new things about him, and Santiago gets his sister off his back. So this book is so, so good. I think it was a perfect way to end the series. It is my favorite in the series, and I really just didn't think I could get, it could get any better, but it did. So I highly, highly recommend this. Also, please read Trigger Warnings if anything could potentially trigger you in this book. Okay, next. Next, I have Maggie Parks. Maggie Parks by Jessa Hastings. I hope you all know what this book is too. Otherwise, you're again living under a rock. This is essentially a Gossip Girl spinoff in a book. It is so, so good. It follows Maggie and BJ. Maggie and BJ have been together since they were young. They've been together for years. And then BJ cheats on her. And things just get toxic as fuck. The toxicity in this book, the miscommunication in this book is out of this world. If you don't like miscommunication, I don't read it because it's full of it. Essentially, Maggie, they just love to hurt each other. They love to hurt each other. Maggie dates different guys to get back at him and BJ sleeps with all these girls to get back at her. But all they really want is to be with each other. It's so good. This series is so, so good. I binged this book in 24 hours. It was that good. And it's a big boy. It is a big, big boy. I cannot explain to you the amount of times I sobbed. I actually sobbed in this book. 
I cannot understand. Like every time either of them would say we're done, I'd sob. I love these two so, so, so much. And the twists and turns in it have you on the edge of your seat, edge of your seat. I cannot wait to read this series more in 2024. I have read the first two and I cannot wait to read the rest. And there's a new one coming out in January as well. So I love Maggie. I love BJ. I love this book so much. Please read it. Please read it. That's five. That is five. So we've got five more to go. Let's recap, shall we? So we've got Fourth Wing, Eyes on Me, Juniper Hill, Redeemed, and Maggie Parks. That's our first five in no particular order. I'm telling you, no particular order. The next one is one I've only just read, and it's already in my top 10, The Fake Out by Stephanie Archer. This is the second book after Behind the Net. What's this series called? Is a good, oh, the Vancouver Storm series. These covers, hold on, these covers, you can't tell me that they're not stunning. I ate this book up. It was so, so, so good. It is, it follows Rory and Hazel. Rory is the new captain of the Vancouver Storm and he's the top scorer. He has a very, very rough home life. He has a lot of expectations put on him and he's known Hazel since he was in high school and he has been crushing on her since high school. She was dating his arch nemesis and they broke up. And then years later, they've come together and Hazel needs an out. She needs a fake boyfriend to make her ex jealous. And Rory is just the guy. He's just the guy. And he's more than happy to oblige because he has been in love with her forever. The way that their trauma is communicated in this book is so, so good. I had a smile on my face the entire time from the chemistry between these two, the love. Rory is such an amazing, amazing male character and he is the blueprint. He's the blueprint, guys. He's so beautiful. He's so sweet. And just the little things that he does, I cannot get over. I will not forget about these guys. I will not. And I want to read this book again already. It was so, so good. Highly, highly recommend it. Next. Now, we seem to have a lot of sports romances coming up. So just hold your horses. Hold your horses. There's a lot of sports romance. The next one that I have in my top 10 for 2023 is Defending the Player by Eloise Tynan. This book, just, this is a special edition cover. So this is not the cover that is on Amazon, but I needed the special edition. I needed it. I needed Luke in my hands. I, I need a minute to actually just like cool down. I'm holding this book and I need to cool down. It's a really small basketball romance and it follows Imogen and Luke. And Luke is a ball player and Imogen is pretty much hates him. She hates him. She really does. She really doesn't like him. I'm telling you that. So essentially they have an accidental kiss in a haunted house and from then on they are pretty much secretly seeing each other, they are sleeping together and everything just, it unravels, it unravels. Luke is the best male character in this series, he is so, so fucking sweet. I really loved this book, I loved the chemistry between them, I really, really I can't even. If any of you have not read the Pearson U series by Eloise Tynan, please do it. Please, please do it. I cannot recommend it enough. These books are so good and she's an Australian author as well. So I will always, always support Australian authors when I can, but these books were so good. The next two books, okay, the next two books in my top 10 are both from the same series, but I'll go through one at a time. So the first one is The Right Move by Liz Tomford. Of course, this book had to be in my top 10. I loved this book so much. I was crying. I was screaming. I was giggling. I was throwing up. I was doing it all. I was doing it all in this book. And that is because of 
fucking Ryan Shea. Ryan Shea. That's all I need to say. That's all you need to read these series. The first one in the series is called Mile High. This is the second one, The Right Move, and it follows Ryan and Indy. Ryan is a basketball player and he is solely focused on basketball and his sister. Those are the only things that he loves and the only things he'll take care of. He puts everything else aside in order to be the best of the best and it shows. He's very closed off, he's very emotionless until one day his sister's best friend, Indy, has to move in because her boyfriend cheated on her. So her boyfriend cheated on her and she had nowhere to live. She had to go and move in with him and they become roommates. It is forced proximity. And the things that this man does for her is out of this world, out of this world. His love language is acts of service. Um, I 100% know that. He is so, so cute. He's the blueprint for all men to follow. And if I ever can find this man in real life, I will make sure to share with every single one of you. He is so, so good. And she is so sweet. It's grumpy sunshine at its finest. Grumpy sunshine at its finest. I couldn't recommend this enough. It was my second favorite in the series and I didn't think anything could get better than this. But you just wait. You just wait. You will know what I'm about to talk about next. <sighs> the God. The God of this series, Kai Rhodes. Kai Rhodes. This book, this motherfucking book, had me in the biggest slump of my life because it was that good. Because it was that damn good. I I was sweating in this book. I was sweating. So it follows Kai Rhodes, who is a very, very good baseball player. And he has a kid and is a single dad. He's a single dad and he's trying to balance it all. He's trying to balance being a baseball player and being a single dad and it's not working. And he gets to the point where he wants to give up baseball and just be a dad full time, except his coach says that there's another option. There's always other options, right? Let's not be hasty. Let's not quit yet. Okay. Thank God he said that. So the coach decides to ask his daughter if she'd like to be a nanny. Say less. Actually say less. So we get to the point where Miller is Kai's son's nanny. She needs a break, right? She needs a break. She is a very famous chef. She is overworked, overruled, and no one takes her seriously as a woman in a male-dominated field, okay? So she wants a break and she wants to see her dad more. She never sees her dad. She never wants to disappoint her dad, so she wants to be the best of the best. But she needs a break. In walks Miller. In walks Miller. And this book... This book? Crack. It's so good. It is so, so, so good. I didn't think anyone would beat Ryan Shea, but Ryan Shea, like, who, Ryan Shea who? Ryan Shea where? Kai Rhodes. Five stars. Infinity stars. Thank me later. That was a very chaotic explanation of what that was, but I get chaotic around that book. I get chaotic and I can't think. I can't breathe. <sighs> okay, I need to take a minute. I need to take a minute. Okay, so the last book in my top 10 for this year, my last book. You all know what it's going to be. I don't know why I left it till last. My baby, my child, the love of my life. This is number one. This is number one. It is my favorite book that I read this year. There is no book that will compare and I don't even want to try. I read this book three times this year. I listened to it once on audio and I read it twice. And I, 
I'm blushing because I'm thinking about Luke Brooks. So it follows Luke Brooks and Clementine Ryder. And Clementine Ryder, she was a barrel racer, a very famous barrel racer, very successful. And there was an accident. There was an accident and she was finding it very hard to get through her PTSD and her issues surrounding it. She was traumatized. So she decides to come home to Rebel Blue Ranch where she her family is. She wants to be with her family and she needs to just refresh and try and fix herself. In walks Luke Brooks. Luke Brooks is Emmy's brother's best friend and they have known each other since they were children. Luke used to be a bit of a player and Emmy didn't like that. She didn't see the charm. She didn't. Until she comes back and everything is changed. Everything is different than when she left it and nothing's the same. And Luke sees Emmy as an adult now and sees her as a completely different person. And this really just opens doors. It opens doors. It opens this window that Luke never even thought that was there. And he is suddenly so attracted to her. And you find out a lot about his personal development between when she left and when she came back. And this man is... He's God tier. He's God tier. No one can convince me otherwise. I talk about this book so much because it is my favorite book ever. It is Sunshine and Rainbows in just in a book. You are reading the pages and you look down and you're just smiling. Your face hurts from smiling and you're pretty much done the book. I don't even... I think I read this in one sitting. It is such an easy, easy read. It's really good for anyone that's slumping at the moment because it is something that you will just fly through. You will fly through it and you will eat it up and you will leave no crumbs. That's all I'm saying. I love this book. It's one of my favorite small towns. It's my favorite of all time. And it's my favorite book of 2023. Surprise, surprise. Um... I am not going to talk about it anymore because you guys know how much I love it. You guys can read it if you want to, which I highly suggest. Not just because I love it, but because it is worth it. It is truly worth a read. So, that's it. That's my top 10 books for the year. Crazy, I know. I want to know what your top book for 2023 is. I want you to comment it down below. What is your favorite book from 2023? For any of you that are watching along, I am going to pop down the names of every single book that I've talked about in the description below. And I'm also going to put my other social media handles in there. I post on TikTok every day. I go live very often and I want to meet you guys and talk to you guys there as well. And I would love if you guys could like this video and subscribe and turn notifications on because this year I'm going to be posting so many YouTube videos. It is one of my goals for this year that I'm going to be posting at least once a week. So any support would be welcome. I love you guys so, so much. I will talk to you soon. Bye.